Welcome Algebra 1 students. We are in lesson 41 today and we're going to talk about the addition of like terms in rational expressions. So we know how to add like terms together. We know if we have terms like 3x plus 4x plus 3abx plus 7yx minus 2ab we can look at those and see that we have only two like terms. That all we have to do is match the variables and then we have what's called like terms. If they're not exactly the same variables with exactly the same exponent, then we can't add them together. So that means that if I had 3x plus 4x squared plus 4x, I could only add the 3x and the 4x together because this 4x squared is a completely different variable. Even though the base is the same, the exponent is different. So everything has to be, all the exponents have to be exactly the same, including the exponent. So we've talked about negative exponents in here. Uh, just a few lessons back, actually. Um, we are going to discuss how to use negative exponents in fractions to find like terms. So let me give you an example. If I have bx over x cubed y to the negative 2 minus 3 by squared x to the negative 2 plus 4y squared b, sorry, that's over bx squared. It's a little hard to tell if we have any like terms at all because at first glance it looks like we have zero like terms, right? because they are, they're different denominators. This one doesn't even have a denominator. It's a little confusing. So we have to simplify it in order to find out if there are any like terms. So what we have to do is put everything in the numerator. And when we do that, it changes the sign of the exponent for the variable that's on the bottom. Okay, for anything on the bottom. So when we fix this one, we put everything in the numerator for this one, we have the bx that we started with in the numerator, and then we're going to move this x3 up to the numerator, but the sign is going to change to a negative. When we move the y negative 2 up, it's going to change to a positive because it's the opposite of whatever that, that is. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a little squishing here. This is x to the positive 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2, so this becomes bx negative 2, y to the positive 2, right? Now let's look at this term. It is what it is. Everything is already in the numerator, so we can just bring it right down. 3b, and let's write it in the alphabetical order the same as this one is. x to the negative 2, y to the positive 2. We can already see that these two are like terms because we have the same exact variables with the same exact exponents. So we can handle these together. Now let's look at this one. Let's bring what is already in the numerator down. And now let's bring this up to the numerator. Well, when we bring this up, this has an exponent of 1. And when we take it to the numerator, the sign changes to a negative 1. This x positive 2 becomes the x negative 2. So we add this in to our system here, our expression, and let's write it in alphabetical order. b negative 1, x negative 2, y positive 2. Okay, so in these two expressions, they have the same variables, but in these two expressions, the b has a positive 1 exponent. It's just invisible. So that invisible one, right? In this expression, it has a negative one. 
So we cannot combine this because these terms are not exactly alike. These are, this is a invisible one right here. So we have one minus three, that's gonna be a negative two, b to the one, x to the negative two, y squared plus four b to the negative one, x to the negative two, y squared. All right. So you could see that's all we can do. That's really it as far as uh, combining like terms are concerned. So let's move on. Let's see what your book says. Yeah, it says the last term is different and cannot be added. So that's it. That's as far as we can go. So it's not super difficult. It, it's very simple. In fact, you're just playing a matching game. The only thing is you are matching the variables. The constants can be different. This whole number here, it could be whatever number. Um, it doesn't matter. It's the variables that have to match. If the variables match, then they are like terms. And then you can perform the operation of addition or subtraction or whatever on the whole numbers in front of the variable. So let's try the first one, which is 41.1. And I'm gonna pause and write this up here. Actually, no, I'm not. I want you to write it as I write it so that um, we can be caught up with one another. Looking at the wrong problem. That's something that you have to be aware of. You don't want to do that. Look at the wrong problem and write the wrong thing down. That could mess you up. All right. If you haven't finished writing this down, I'll give you just a second, or you can pause and finish and then press play. All right, so let's see what we can do. Let's move all of this to the numerator. So we have bx, which is right here. Then we're gonna change this sign to b, uh, to x negative three, and then this will be positive two. All right, bring down this operation. And then we have three b y squared x negative two, because it, uh, it has, it's just over one. It doesn't have a denominator. Plus four y squared, b will become positive and x will become negative exponent all right so let's let's do some com combination here this is a one so that's going to be b x negative two y two minus three b x negative two notice i'm writing them all in alphabetic order just for the sake of being able to match them up better. And it looks like x squared, y squared, x negative squared, y squared. These are all like terms. So we could say one minus three is gonna be negative two plus four plus four, negative two plus four is gonna be two, positive two, b x negative two y squared. We see that all three of the terms are like terms and can be added by adding the numerical coefficients. And when we finish this, there's only one other thing that you can really do, um, and that is to take the negative exponents back down to the bottom. So you can rewrite this as 2bY squared 
over x squared. And for the most part, that's what we're going to want you to do is to make all the exponents positive. Um, and all you do is move it to the bottom or you move it to the top if it's a negative and it changes it to a positive, just like we did here. We moved it to the denominator and it made it a positive exponent. So this would be your answer for 41.1. .1. So all of this right here equals this right here. All right, let's move on to 41.2. And write with me as I write so we can all catch up together. If you want, you can also open up a copy of the textbook for this lesson and print it out from the material section for this class. The entire textbook is available if you prefer to have something to read. Um, if I haven't mentioned that to you before now, it is out there. All right, so let's see if we can find some like terms. So let's put these together. A negative 3, and then we have a B, and then we have a B negative 3. That will become a positive 3. So when we put all of this together, we'll have A negative 3, B to the 4. Okay, this has 2, B to the 4, A to the negative 3. So I'm going to rewrite it in alphabetical order just to make sure. And yes, a negative 3, b4, a negative 3, b4. We know there's an invisible number 1 right here. So this is going to be 3, a negative 3, b to the 4. And when we, re we rewrite that with a positive exponent, we get 3, b to the 4, a to the 3. And that would be the answer for 41.2. Be sure to write down your example problem so you can see how this works. So let's talk about the steps. Step one is to move all exponents, or I'm sorry, move all variables to the numerator. I don't know what that did. Changing the exponent sign as you do. Combine variables if possible. Or I should say, just combine like variables in each term. Number three, rewrite terms with variables. in alphabetic order. Or the same order. To better match like terms. Step four. Combine like terms, if you can. Step five is to um, put negative variables. in the denominator. 
changing the sign as you do. All right, those are the five steps. That's all you have to do is five steps for this. So we moved first all the variables to the numerator. This was step one. Step two, um, we combined the like variables and then we did step two and step three at the same time. We rewrote them. Then we combined the like terms here and then we put the negative variables in the denominator here. So that should help you see all the steps there are. So take a moment, pause the video, and write all of this down. Write down your steps so you know what steps to take and how they relate to this process. You want to make sure that you are checking to see if you can complete all of these every time you come across one of these problems. And this is going to be something that you should do as a process. Every time you have an expression, you always, always will do this. The first thing you want to do is see if you have like terms and combine them. It doesn't matter whether it is an equation or just an expression. You always want to combine your like terms. That's like the first step. And this is the process by which you combine complicated terms and find the ones that are alike. All right. Pause if you need to need more time to write this down. I'm going to clear the page. All right, that was 41.2. Let's do 41.3. Right, I'm going to um, pause and write this because this is a big one. All right, so here is the expression. So remember your steps that you just wrote down from the last problem. I want you to pause this video and solve this using the steps that you just wrote down. All right, and once you have solved it, press play and see if we get the same answer. If your answer matches mine, then you are doing a great job. If it doesn't match mine, then you need to walk through, you need to pause the video after the answer is revealed and walk through and make sure um, you didn't forget to do something like change a uh, exponent sign or maybe you just didn't write them in alphabetical order and it made you confused. The little things, the details will matter with this. So if you don't get the same answer I do, then go back and walk through it and see what happened. All right, so go ahead and pause it now and work the problem. All right, the answer to this problem, you should have gotten 2B squared C over A to the third or a cubed plus 3b squared over a cubed c. So here's what we did. We put everything in the numerator. We did not have any like variables. So we skipped step two and went straight to step three and rewrote all the variables in alphabetical order so we could match them. These two were like terms so we combined them. Seven minus five is two. And then we changed all of our negative variable, negative exponent variables by putting them in the numerator, I'm sorry, putting them in the denominator, uh, that changed them to positive exponent variables. And that is our final answer. Okay, let's do, um, oh, that's the last one like that. So let's move on to two-step problems. So a two-step problem um, just is what it says it is. Sometimes a problem requires two steps. If you need to write this sample problem down, then go ahead and pause and, um, and do that now. 
I'm about to clear the page and start this next part. So a two-step problem is simply a problem that has two steps. Pretty self-explanatory. So what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to just jump right in here with 41.4. And here is the problem. I'm going to write it out and hopefully my handwriting will not be absolutely terrible. All right, if x plus 3 is 7, what is the value of, I'm sorry, I didn't write it all down, x minus 8? So all this is saying is solve for x and then take that value of x and put it into this problem and solve it. So first we solve this one. We say x plus 3 equals 7. We subtract 3 from both sides. This cancels. This becomes x equals 4. So now we take this 4 and we put it in here. We say x minus 8 equals something. 4 minus 8 equals negative 4. That's all this problem is doing. Very, very straightforward. Okay? So let's do another one. This one is 41.5. So if x minus 5 equals 7, then what is the value of x plus 4? All right, so let's solve the first one, x minus 5 equals 7. I'll tell you what, I would like for you guys to solve this and give me this final answer, okay? So pause, solve it, and then press play. Should only take you a moment. So if you got the answer that 12 plus 4 is equal to 16, um, then that is correct. We found x to be the value of 12. These are actually really, really easy. Um, and that's all we have for lesson 41. So this is just preparing you for uh, more complicated problems as we get further into the book. You're going to have to solve for this one in order to get to this one, and they're going to get harder and harder. But this is just starting you in that direction. So learn how to see what is being asked. Okay? We're not solving for x. We're finding the second part. So this is all about learning how to read a word problem and understand what steps you need to take to get to the final answer that it is asking for. You've got to understand what a problem is asking you in order to answer it. All right, that's all I have for lesson 41. I will see you in lesson 42.